Okay, I've got 11 o'clock here, so we'll go ahead and get going. Again, this is the What's New in AccuSQL 2015 and AccuTrack 2015 webinar. Um, we're excited to show you all of the new features and enhancements we've added for the new version of the software. Um, this time we decided to create some brand new applications that you'll see. One is called Quick Panel, and the other is the Waiting List. That will be included in your uh, AccuTrack or AccuSQL 2015 package. Um, we've added several other enhancements that we'll show you during this webinar. Also, I have a PDF document that shows all of the changes and enhancements, and I can send that out to you after the webinar is over. Again, we're very excited about this release, and you hope, we hope that you will enjoy it as much as we've enjoyed developing it. Now I'm going to turn the webinar over to Laura Alvarez, and she's going to show us the first standalone application we've created that's called the Quick Panel. Good morning. So we are excited to show you some of these things. This quick panel that we designed is uh, essentially for those of you who work uh, individually with students and have found in the past that you were jumping in and out of different panels in, in AccuTrack and it was a little bit cumbersome to get a couple easy things done. So now we've put all these panels together. So as you can see, we have on the upper left, there are students in line. So if you are using an intake, uh, method at your center or department. These students are the ones that are waiting in line to see. Now, at the moment, I only have one student waiting in line because I'm logged in as Morgan Freeman. However, by clicking the all waiting, I can see other students waiting. For example, maybe I want to take a student that I know wanted to see Cindy Bright, but she either is not here yet today or maybe she's working with another student is taking longer, I could take that student and sign them in with me. So let's go ahead and sign Chad in with me. And meanwhile, I'm working with Chad in. So let's go ahead and sign Chad in out. And all this can be done right here from this panel. So I'm done with Chad in. Now I'm speaking with Chad. When you double click on the student down in, this, um, in the, the middle of our panel, you can see all of the session logs for that student. And this includes anywhere that they've been on your campus that is using AccuTrack that's in the same database. That's very helpful if you're referring students out to other parts of campus and you want to see if they actually follow through with that. Right here, I can make my notes. I can also fill out a session questionnaire if I'm using that. I can work on their success plan. And to the right, I have an entire menu of other things that I could do with the student, like register them to another activity or register them to a seminar, create another appointment. And by the way, that send message that is there will work if you're using your text messaging service through Nexmo. You can even text message students that are waiting in line and letting, let them know that you're ready and where you'll be. Or maybe I need to tell someone in that line that that service isn't going to be available today because I have a staff that didn't come in today. So all of that is there for you. And at the bottom, you have all of your regular uh, accesses back into AccuTrack. So we've tried to put it all on one page for you to make it a lot easier when you're working individually with a student. OK, thank you, Laura. And I kind of jumped the gun on uh, showing QuickPanel. I just wanted to mention in the GoToWebinar, uh, everyone's muted right now. Um, but you can type any questions you have right in the GoToWebinar interface. There's a Questions tab that you can expand and type any questions in. And also, when we're done with the webinar, we'll have a Q&A session at the end. Okay? Thanks. Okay, so what we've got here is the Quick Panel, which again, this is an application that's included with the AccuSQL or AccuTrack 2015 package. Um, it's used primarily by advisors and counselors. Certainly, tutors can use it as well. But again, centralized access to everything that you would have to go screen by screen in AccuTrack to get to, you can now go right through the panel to do that. OK. Along with the intake system, we've also added a waiting list executable file. And what this is for is if you use the intake system or activity waiting list in AccuTrack or AccuSQL, um, you can display that waiting list either on a monitor or a television screen in your center. So those students can just walk right up and see where they are in line. OK, and again, that's a standalone exe file. Um, this is configurable by you in that uh, the way it looks is controlled by a style sheet. And the scrolling message at the bottom, the number of rows, the refresh rate, et cetera, are all handled through an XML file. So you can just run this exe and show it on whatever screen you'd like to in your center. 
Now let's continue with the idea of working with students individually. Uh, there's another uh, substantial feature that we added to AccuTrack and AccuSQL, and that is a student success plan. Now the idea behind this is that when we have to start working with students individually on their, the obstacles that they're faced in uh, higher ed and we want them to be successful, we can actually design very specific, unique plans for them in this feature. Let's start with the action item itself. So I can create an action item and I can group them under different uh, categories, so to speak, or types. And these items are telling the student of what they need to do. Then down at the bottom I can put a note with that, ac that action item that is specific to that item. For example, if I'm telling the student to go speak with their advisor, I can also tell them where that advisor is located. If I'm telling them to go use a specific tutoring lab, I can tell them where that tutoring lab is located. So that note stays with the action item itself and I can create as many as I need and I can even package them if I needed to. So now let's go look at an actual student plan. Alright, so we're picking a student out of that list and we see that this student actually has a little bit of a plan. There are a couple items that we have asked this student to do. And you can see down in the lower left who asked the student to do it. And then there's a specific note that can be put on when, when the action item is assigned. So even though uh, this student was told to go review their education plan with their advisor, they were also giving a specific note to make sure that statistics was not needed for their major. That way the student can remember what it is and why you're sending them to this other resource on campus. Then once the student has actually shown up at advising, if your advising center is using AccuTrack, that person themselves can complete it for you and make some other notes on this session. Now this completion note will never be seen by the student, but the first two notes will be seen. That way the student knows where to go to get their plan done. So, so you basically have all these items that the student can do. You tell them where to get these resources on your campus, and then you can see whether or not they completed it. If you have a resource on campus that isn't using AccuTrack, just have the student come back and you can complete it for them. Another thing that we can do is we can bulk assign these action items because sometimes we get lovely lists like for example a list of our students that have had a rejected SAR. So I can grab that group that I've created in my AccuTrack and I can bulk assign them some things that they may need to do with financial aid to get that taken care of. So we can have many students with many action items so it's a little easier for you. Now once we started using these uh, action items with a student we may, one of the most important things is one, that they're getting these things done and two, now you have a way to assess what's going on in your uh, department or program as far as these things that we're offering to the student and directing them to, do they actually have an impact on their success? So let's look at the report for this. I can run this report individually on a student or all my students that I want to look at. So this time we're just going to do all the students so we can kind of see what this report looks like. It's going to show you the student, it's going to show you the title of the action item, it's going to show you when it was assigned and what the deadline was, and then it's going to give you a rate of whether or not that was completed. We've given you a rate for whether it was completed in general or whether it was completed within the deadline. You have both of those, those rates. So we're hoping that that's going to give you um, some more power to see how your services that you're offering to the students, especially when they're individual, have an impact on their success. And that's a plan with just one student, which also could be saved in their file, so you can show that you actually worked with them individually. Yes, and also this report, uh, Laura might have mentioned it, but this is available from the student pad, so the student can check their own educational plan. Um, also, it can be emailed automatically to the students uh, on your own schedule. Okay, the next item we're going to talk about is profile assignments per local lab. Now, as most of you probably know, we have 10 profile fields that we can assign to students, um, and these were 
uh, in the older versions, shared across the enterprise. And what I mean by that is if you had a tutoring center, an advising center, a counseling center, a library, whatever the case may be, you only were allowed the 10 profile questions, and you had to share those 10 questions amongst yourselves. Uh, what we've done now is created profiles per local lab. So let's go look at that real quickly under student demographics, student profile. These are the 10 profile questions I just showed you. But then if I go look at profile setup, I can change and look at my profile questions for a particular lab. So I've got the ones that are available in my default all, the 10 canned questions, if you will. If I change to my math lab, I have three profile questions that are specific to my math lab in this case. Now once I change my uh, local lab here, my sign-in lab, let's make it the math lab. Then I would need to turn my update profile on. And what that does is enable the profile field to be updated by the student. So we'll do that. And now when I sign in, I will see my update profile screen with the 10 uh, canned questions, if you will. I continue on, and now I have the three specific questions that are set up for my math lab. Okay, so you can have different profiles for all of your various labs. Okay, now along those same lines, let's go take a look at the profile queries per local lab. So I have now my math lab set, and I can query on the math lab or whatever labs I have. But these are the profile questions from the math lab. So let's say, for example, I'd like to know my students that like calculus and geometry that plan to visit my center again. Okay, I can view the results of that. So I have uh, five students that meet that criteria, and I could create a student group right from that profile query. Let's just call it like calc, for example. Okay, so now based on that local uh, profile, the math lab profile, I've created a student group from that profile. Okay, now along the same lines with uh, profiles uh, per local lab, we went one step further and we added custom surveys per local lab. Okay, so let me show you that real briefly here. And as you recall, a custom survey was something that where you could add the radio buttons, check boxes, text boxes, et cetera, uh, to collect information from students or tutors. Uh, but that, again, was across the enterprise. Everyone would see it. You couldn't have a custom uh, survey that appeared in the math lab that was different than one that appeared in the uh, advising center, for example. But now you can. Okay, so I've got a couple of surveys here. I've got one called Math Lab Survey. Okay, and I can preview that. So I've got questions specific to my math lab here. Okay, so real briefly, I'm going to publish that survey. And I'll make it available for, let's say, the end of November. And I want to present that to my students, and I want to present that at sign-in. Now, while we're here, by the way, um, I now have the capacity to assign those custom surveys not only for local labs, but also for specific student groups. So I could say, show my math lab custom survey in my math lab, but only show it to my students that like calculus, for example, which was that group I just created. If I don't do that, then it'll be presented to all students as they sign into my math lab. Now here, I need to make sure I change that because I want to show that in my math lab. I do that and save, and now if I return to the sign-in screen, now I'm seeing my math lab survey because I'm set to my local math lab. Okay, now I'm going through the next process, and I've got my math lab profile, so all three happening at once there. And then I'd sign in normally if I wanted to. Okay, now I'm going to change to my local lab again, or excuse me, to my default lab again, because I want to show you another feature that we've added to Web Gateway. And again, Web Gateway is the web-based uh, program that you can use to schedule appointments and register for seminars via the web so the students don't have to come all the way to the center to do so. 
Okay, so I've set my lab to uh, default all, and Web Gateway uses the default all surveys to display. Okay, but what, I, what we can do now is show those custom surveys directly in Web Gateway. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and publish another survey. And I've got one called Tutoring Center Survey. And I'll show that from, say, yesterday to the end of the month to students at sign-in, let's say. And I'm going to leave it at default all lab. Okay, I'm going to save that. And now I think I have Web Gateway open here. If not, I can do so uh, right here from our intranet. So I'm logging into Web Gateway with the student ID. And it takes me directly to that custom survey that I've just published uh, back in AccuSQL. I click that survey, and now I can, take, uh, I can collect that same information that I was through AccuTrack. So we can now fill out these forms uh, directly through Web Gateway. Okay? Another interesting thing that we've done with these custom surveys is we've attached them to your profiles. So now, instead of just getting the survey results back, you can also see the profile of the student that answered the questions on that survey, which is more like an attributed survey, and it should be able to give you guys more insight on the results. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you, uh, now we had an issue in the past, and some of you may have experienced this, um, where we have a setting on appointment sign-ins, and that setting says bypass activity and tutor selection screen for appointment sign-ins. Okay, now what that does, and uh, you've probably experienced it, is the student doesn't pick a thing when they sign in for an appointment. It uses the activity in the tutor that they selected at the, at the time the appointment was made. But that was causing confusion for students because it would just say signed in at, and they didn't really know what they were doing. So now during an appointment sign-in, a student will get a message indicating that they're signing in for an appointment. Now I said that I can be 30 minutes early and 30 minutes late, and I don't have any uh, rules about how uh, far in advance I can make the appointment. So I can go ahead and make an appointment right now if I'd like to as a student. And I'll pick, I don't know, let's say math, college algebra with Cindy Bright at 1130. Okay, so now that appointment is made, and I can actually sign in for that appointment right now, which I'll do. Oh, and I got my tutoring center survey. The one that I just published to Web Gateway is now showing in AccuSQL. And it says, thank you for signing in for MAT College Algebra appointment with, now that's off the screen there, but it should be saying, I think, Cindy. But anyway, it's indicating to the student, and we may need to evaluate. Actually, I'm sorry, I can change that font size if I want to make that a little smaller. But it indicates to the student that, indeed, they are signing in for an appointment and what it's for and who it's with. So as we started making uh, AccuTrack more able to be deployed in different departments, there was a, a piece with your terminology that, that was only for the database itself. So now we've made your terminology that you can change for, for your center and program specific to your lab. So if you have a tutoring lab that wants to call the people who work there tutors, they can do that, whereas if you have an advising department that's using AccuTrack, they can call their, their workers advisors. So you, you have that ability now. And as you can see, I've just changed to my math lab, and I'm calling my categories disciplines. I'm calling my activities courses, my tutors, I'm calling mentors. So you can have different terminology per local lab. So another feature that we added is we've noticed that uh, some of the programs and departments using AccuTrack didn't always have their uh, categories and activities uh, as part of something in an import, and they had these very um, elaborate uh, phases of, of different programs and things of that nature where they needed to register a large group of students to these activities by hand. So to help them out with that, we now allow you to register students to activities by group. 
So we're hoping that's going to be helpful and save you time. And as you'll see here, I've just selected that student group. And then if I select students from that group, it'll automatically populate the selected side. So in this case, I, am, I can register all of my extra math help students directly to my math lab activity in this case. Okay. So that's how that works. We also added this feature to your seminars. So if you are um, putting on events from your program or your department, and you wanted those events to only be seen by a, group, a certain group of students, you can now do that. So our example here is that maybe we've collected applications from prospective tutors, and we have an event that we need them to attend, like an orientation, and we really only want it to be available to the students who put in applications. So you could do that with your group. Okay, the next thing, which I think will be a handy feature for a lot of you, and I'm going to switch my lab back real quick because I have the intake system on in my default. But a trend that we've seen uh, over time has been it seems to me there's a lot more staff and tutors than there used to be. Um, this was a request from uh, an advising center, but anyway, this college had 120 or so tutors and three advisors. So through the intake system, they would have to pick through that big long list to find themselves to sign a student into from the intake system. So we've made that a lot easier now. Okay, so what we've got here is a list of only the tutors or advisors based on your terminology that offer help in this case with ENG 2202. Now if I show all tutors, it'll show my entire tutor or staff member list but now I can focus in on the exact people that help with academic coaching or help with F F A F S A issues. FASA. I guess you guys know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> it's a FAFSA. So it's a real easy way to see the tutors or advisors that help in that specific activity. At the same time, we gave you the ability to take that intake system button off of your main screen where students could see it. Some of your programs and departments have activities with titles that would be sensitive if a student could click on that and see what other students were waiting for. So now you have the ability to have it on or off. The next thing we want to talk about is a new report that we added. Currently, you can have a student attendance report that will show you every activity that this student participated in, and that's very helpful. But to see any comments that were made during these sessions, we had to go to the session log report. And this session log report will show you the comments made on the activities. However, it didn't also show you every activity that the student did. So sometimes when you're trying to um, investigate something going on, you kind of needed to see a progression of where, where that student, which services they were using, and who they were talking to. So now what we've added is a report that will show you every single activity and the comment if it has one instead of just showing you the activities that had comments. So we're hoping that's going to be very helpful for many of you. Okay, and just like we saw before with the register students uh, from a student group, we can do the same now for manual sign-in processes. So let's do a student sign-in here and I can pick what I'd like to sign them into. Let's say we're going to do uh, math and we'll pick our math lab here. Now I can pick students specifically from a student group, let's say our light calculus people, and directly sign all of those people in right through a manual process. So now everyone in my light calculus group is now being signed in. I'm giving them a round trip here. In other words, I can give them an hour period or uncheck that, sign them all in, and then sign them out manually when I'm done with them. Okay, so it's a very quick method to sign in a whole group of people. Um, some of you tutors may use the class sign in, but this is the same sort of concept with a student group um, from the administrator side of AccuTrack or AccuSQL. Okay, the next thing we've added here and some of you may have noticed the great majority of our reports are sorted on the last name of the student or the last name of the tutor. However, we saw a few reports in here that were sorted on first name. 
So we decided, should we fix those and make it last name, or should we give you the option to sort however you'd like? So that's what we've done. So uh, based on the report, now the report would need to have a student in it to use this feature, or a tutor in it if you use the tutor sort feature. But as you can see, I can sort either on last first or first last for any report that has student information or tutor information in it. So when you use um, our registration feature in AccuTrack, anytime you signed a student into an activity, it kind of automatically registered them for that activity. We have some programs and departments that would rather that not happen, um, especially if they're tracking things like statuses and they want to see it chronologically in the student report, so they log them in under that activity. They don't then want that activity to pop up on the student screen. So now we've given you that option. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about here are some search enhancements that we've added. So let's go look at the sign-in log as a good place for an example here. And some of you may have seen these binocular icons, the search icons, but we've made these uh, a whole lot more usable. Uh, back in the old versions of the software, for example, if I wanted to drill down to find a particular student record, my only option was to type the last name, comma, first name. But we've added a lot more usability here in that now, if I click that icon, I can search for first name, middle name, last name, or student ID. So if I type that ID and do OK, now I'm seeing just that student's sign-ins. And I could further subsort if I wanted to. So let's say I want that student, but only when they've come in for, I don't know, let's say grad meeting. Okay, so it's a real quick and efficient method to find exactly that record that you're looking for. Okay, and you'll find that in various places throughout the software. Uh, the next one is a small enhancement, but I think an important one, and that is adding the capacity to search tutors by the ID. And again, with the growing number of, of tutors and staff that are being added here in our tutors table, um, we were seeing where we had duplications of the staff member names. So how do you know which Bob Smith you're working with? Well, now you can just go drill down and search directly by ID and find that exact record. Okay. Uh, next thing is the edit sign-in logs. We've added some enhancements there as well. And I guess I should have stayed on that screen. I was just there. But let's go ahead and add a record here and see if we can find something with math. Let's see. Don't have any math, so let's expand this a little bit. Well, I'm looking for math. I guess, you know what, if I, let me use my new search feature, right? Let's just look for, uh, I don't know, category. Oh, well, I'm in the tutor sign-in log, so I'm a dummy. I wanted to go to student sign-in log, so never mind. No wonder I couldn't find math. Okay, so here we are in the students. Those were tutor sign-ins we were just looking at. But what I want to do is edit a record here, and all of this is leading up to some new enhancements to the edit sign-in logs. Uh, back in the old days, if you uh, had a student that signed in for math, but they signed in for the default lab, and you said, actually, they signed into the math center, so I want to change that lab to math, that was a very difficult process and really couldn't be done from the software itself. But now I can. I can say, um, actually, I'm in English. I guess it would make more sense if I was in math. But then I can say, well, this sign-in happened, but it happened in my math lab. So I can directly assign the local lab for that sign-in. Uh, further, I don't believe that Instructor was available before, but now we can pick and edit that information as well. Okay, now we're going to talk briefly about Computer Lab. Uh, what we've done is uh, enabled another layer of security on the Computer Lab. And again, that's the plug-in piece that makes every computer in, a, in the lab its own sign-in station. And I have settings for that here in my add-on setup. But what we've added is the ability to uh, require a student to enter not only an ID, but an ID and a password uh, in 
order to be able to unlock that computer lab PC. So if you want that extra security for computer lab sign-ins, you now have that ability. Okay. Um, now this one, I was surprised we didn't have it, but one of our colleges pointed it out, is now both of these computer lab reports uh, can use a lab, local lab ID filter. So for example, I can see all of my computer lab sessions, but I can see it now specifically for uh, one or more local labs. So now I'm seeing all of the sign-ins, computer lab sign-ins that have happened uh, on stations that had a local lab ID of math. Okay? Back before, it showed all of them, and we had no way of filtering on local lab. Okay, the next thing we want to show you is a, another new report or just actually a column that we added in our session questionnaire summary report. Some of you use your session questionnaires to uh, capture what type of student they were working with or even what type of um, services were being provided. And so now we've added a distinct count to that report so that you can not only see that in, in this example of was a student prepared, there were 26 times that your staff or tutors answered yes but it was only 13 distinct students. This is very helpful for a TRIO program with their required, uh, required services that they now have to rep report on their APR. Okay, the next thing I'm going to talk about is what would happen if we did an import of just a few student records here, and I don't even need to do one, but what I want to show you is this inactivate students not an import file. Now, I've had lots of colleges call me and say, well, I imported uh, 10 students that I wanted to register, but now all the rest of them are inactive um, because this checkbox was set. So that would inactivate everybody, every student in AccuTrack except for the 10 that were in the import file. Um, when that happened, the only way that we could set them back was actually go into the database itself and run a script to set them back to active. But now you can do that directly in the software. So let me go ahead and mark a few students here as inactive, just so I can show you how it works. Okay, so now I have three inactive. Well, you'll notice the button right here, set active inactive. Okay, and it'll say would I like to proceed, sure. Okay, and you can see I have a status column here that has active and inactive. So I'm going to right click on my inactive and start a uh, filter on a starts with. So now I'm seeing every student that's inactive in my database. Now I can right click and select all and then it will say would I like to set them to active? Sure. So I can set them to active or inactive in bulk directly in the student screen. Okay, now the next item and I had falsely said that this was how it worked but let's look at our semester here real quick. Okay, so I had told one of our clients that if you have a semester that includes today, when you do your activity import, it will automatically mark all of those activities as active or selected. But I was actually wrong on that because it only did that for new activities. Um, if the activities already existed, then they would stay on the not selected side. So in order to get around that, we enhance the activity import that says activities that are not in import file should be set to active. So that means uh, every activity that's on that import file will automatically be set to active for the current semester. Okay, so that'll you know, prevent you from having to go back and forth in that semester box. Uh, some of you can relate to it's like finding a needle in a haystack sometime to find those active activities to move them to the selected side. So that's going to become a whole lot easier in this release. Okay, the next one we're going to talk about is uh, actually a lot harder than it sounds, but in ID settings, uh, we've seen colleges, some colleges have a lot longer IDs than we ever anticipated. So it used to be MEN4 MAX20 for either the student ID or the optional secondary card ID. Um, we bumped that up now from 4 to 40. So you can have up to 40 characters for either the ID or card ID. While we're here, also, uh, we have the capacity to show the student ID in various new locations, including intake system, activity waiting list, edit sign-in logs, and who's end screen. 
Now, by the way, those IDs will only be shown when you're logged in uh, in an administrator capacity. Uh, if you show the intake system on the main screen and the student clicks it, there we're not going to show ID there. Okay, so it's only on the back end of the software. Okay, uh, small change here. Uh, this is in visit tracking reports. But we have a couple of reports here that open directly in Excel. That would be weekly student time, weekly student visits. Um, we weren't passing the card ID or secondary ID uh, to the Excel document when we were generating that report, but now we are. So now we have card ID as an additional column available in that Excel table that's generated through either one of those reports. Okay. All right, let me look here at my list to see what else we've got going. Okay, uh, in the customized menu, some of you may have shown or accessed that. I have the capacity to change any of the names, to change the sort order, to hide or unhide any of these items. Um, but I got where I was taking support calls and saying go to the, I don't know, program assessment menu, and they never had one because they changed it. Uh, so if this gets out of whack or you're not sure what they were originally called, you can now reset those menu items back uh, to what they were when we shipped you the software. Okay. Finally, in Help Center, our tip of the day here, Laura spent lots of time um, adding new tips. So we had some that were saying new in version 8. So I guess it's high time we actually upgraded these. But you'll see a lot of tips in here that are specifically for uh, AccuTracker, AccuSQL 2015, that many of them talk about exactly what we've shown you here in this webinar. So we would encourage you to look through those. Uh, I'll send the PDF document that shows all this to whomever likes it. And I'm thinking I'll be recording a webinar on implementing these various features, so the nuts and bolts of implementing these uh, enhancements in your center. Okay, so I think that concludes our presentation. There is a web form that you can fill out. Uh, to request the upgrade, and I think I can remember what that is. Let's see, we'll go to our Engineerica site here. So it's engineerica.com and then forward slash platinum dash upgrade dash request. Now that's quite a bit to type, but if you go there, then there's a form that you can fill out to request the upgrade for Accu SQL or AccuTrack 2015. Um, the way that'll work is, you know, each installer we create uh, uniquely or customized because it has your own college logo on it. Uh, we'll build the installer for you. We'll put it out in our shared Dropbox, send you a link to download it. Um, at which time there, there's videos on installing and upgrading, etc. But at that time, if you have any questions uh, with the implementation, then you know obviously we're more than happy to do a support call, support session with you, or a go-to meeting to help you implement the new version. And as we mentioned, it would be a fresh install of 2015. Uh, you don't necessarily need to uninstall 14 first, although you can. And also, just to let you know, Accu uh, AccuSQL or AccuTrack 2015, that database is backward compatible with a 2014 client. So what I mean by that is you can upgrade your database to 2015 and still continue to use AccuTrack or AccuSQL 2014 with that database. Now obviously you don't want to do that forever, but it doesn't mean you have to go install 2015 on every client immediately. They can continue to use 14 and then you can upgrade you know, uh, as you have time to do so on the client station.